This is a Hall Effect sensor. And in a previous video, we went over the 1879 paper by Edwin Hall, where he discovered and documented the, the Hall Effect. But to cover that in a nutshell, if you have a current flowing in a wire and you bring a magnet and place it by the current, some of the current gets deflected to one side of the wire or the other, depending on whether you have the north pole facing the current or the south pole. So let's say the south pole and some of the electrons are dragged towards the magnet. And so that side of the wire has a, a negative voltage and then positive accumulates on the other side to even things out. And across the wire develops what's called a Hall voltage. And if instead of using a wire, you have the current flowing and then it goes through a real thin square plate, then what you can do is you could have a meter like, like Edwin um, Hall did on one side of the plate and on the other side of the plate and if you place a magnet like that you see that in one orientation there's a positive voltage that develops and with the other pole of the magnet there's a negative voltage that develops so that's what a, a Hall effect sensor does but now let's talk about how we can do something with one of these components so if we head out now to the mighty DigiKey put in Hall Effect sensor, then here's um, switches solid state. I thought this was the best place to go. It turns out that wasn't, and I'll get to that as we go along. But let's go there now. And there are just a, a dizzying array of various implementations of the Hall Effect as a sensor and a switch. But we can kind of, you know, I mean, first you probably want it to be in stock, and then you're going to want it to, if you're working with breadboard, you want it to be through hole. So that gets us to 321. Now, one, one go for hole is if you're doing, you know, commutation with this, you don't want it to be latching. Latching means that if the field come pa comes past, the device turns on and then it just stays on until it sees an opposite field. And so that's probably not a good, you know, depending on what you're using, that would be might be ideal, but not a great thing for like spinning a rotor. So let's get rid of those. And we're down to 161. Then the last thing is um, voltage supply. You want to be able to run it off an Arduino, so you need the minimum to be under five, so we can get rid of one of those there. And 159. Let's just first just take a look at the first one that comes up just to look at the pinout. So if we go to the data sheet, Hopefully it gives us the pin out. Yay! So all of these sensors pretty much universally have this kind of tapered square and and now we know the pin out. So this pin goes to VCC, so it would go to five volts on the Arduino. This would go to the Arduino ground, and then this will give you your hall voltage output. So we've got that part down. So if we go now to polarization, so some of them will respond to a north pole and a north pole only, some to a south pole, and some will respond to either a north pole or a south pole. And there are two types of Hall effect sensors that respond to a north pole and a south pole. So normally, let's say you have one that just responds to a north pole. You bring the north pole magnet in, you get a Hall effect voltage. You take it away, there's nothing. You bring a south pole in, there's nothing. So to do bipolar commutation, you'd buy a north pole one and a south pole one. Now, most of the Hall effect sensors that are north pole, south pole, 
you bring a north pole in, you get a Hall effect voltage. You bring a south pole in, you get the same Hall effect voltage. Exact, exact same kind of Hall effect voltage. So that doesn't really help you. Now you can only do monopolar commutation. But within this north pole, south pole grouping, there's a, a set of these sensors that are called ratiometric sensors. And I, I would like to say, you know, that I, I studied it for days and then I, I picked the correct ratiometric one and put that in for, you know, the last machine that I had spinning. It, it was nothing of the sort. Uh, uh, <laughs> there's just, I had all these Hall effect sensors lying around and they're tiny. You can't, you know, I, you can't figure out, um, you know, if it's, if it's gotten away from the original label, it's real tough. I finally figured out what I had there with, um, you know, using the, uh, the, using the um, camera on the phone to magnify it. But there's another kind where a north pole will give you, say, a negative voltage and a south pole will give you a positive voltage and not the same voltage each time. And those are called ratiometric sensors and that's what you want. So the Texas Instruments has such good write-ups. If we look at this Texas Instrument write-up, Understanding and Applying Hall Effect Sensor Data Sheets. And I'm not going to go over the, the whole thing, of course, but um, you know, here they're talking about digital hall sensors and then linear hall sensor functionality. So let's let's go there. This is what you want to see. Okay. This is the DRV5055. When I finally was able to get a number off of the, the hall that I was using, where, you know, again, I just threw the thing in and then I plugged it in the Arduino and it's like, well, gee, I don't remember it doing that. That's really cool. I bet I could use that. So this is when you have a ratiometric one. It has its baseline voltage. Now you bring a north to the, to the 5055 and that voltage drops to essentially zero. You bring a south and it goes upwards. And this is all on one Hall effect. So now you don't need two Hall effects because now you can tell the Arduino, well, if this number is high, do one thing. If this number is low, do a different thing. So I finally, as I said, came to the conclusion. I, I had a Texas Instruments 5053. If we bring up that data sheet, and it's a 30 page data sheet, I mean, they, they really, uh, go through everything here um, but sure enough there's that same thing this is what you want to see and here's the DRV 5055 that was mentioned in the in the tutorial ratiometric linear Hall effect sensor that's sort of what you're looking for and you see the same graph so this is what you want um, because it lets you do bipolar commutation with a single Hall and it also, it lets you do position sensing because you could say, we'll turn on here. Oh no, let's turn on, you know, let's turn on here or here. And with the other one, you know, here or here. And that gives you some rudimentary um, uh, pulse width modulation. Although since you're sending it to the Arduino, I mean, you can do anything with it now. You can tell it to go for, you know, uh, uh, 500 microseconds and then shut off or, you know, you could tell it every thousandth and twenty seventh time a magnet comes past, and you know, do a API call to check the weather in Florida. Well, I mean that's kind of silly. I, I I couldn't do that, but maybe somebody could. It wouldn't surprise me. Go back to you know the Hall effect sensor here. These are the switches. I think you know what you want is magnetic sensors linear, and so now in stock. Um, through hole and now let's bring up Texas Instruments again and apply all and yeah here's the 5053 here's the 5055 the same ones that you know we were looking at the data sheets for and we know how they behave 
So it would be my guess that pretty much all of these Hall effects under this um, linear compass grouping, not just the, the um, Texas Instruments ones, would behave in the same manner. But Texas Instruments is, is kind enough to just spell this out for you. And so we're going to look at that on the breadboard in a moment here. But, um, oh, and, and yeah, there's, you know, there's, oh, uh, there's 13,000 in stock of those, 10,000 in stock of these. Um, so it's not something hard to come by. And I think I had the 5053, um, the operating voltage is like, uh, 2.5 to 38. I don't, I don't need 38 volts. I'm just going to be using an Arduino. The 5055, 3.3 to 5 volts. So I think this would be the better choice because um, it's probably more tailored to logic level. Is, that's what you call it. Uh, and also, this is just a good article, a write-up on linear Hall effect sensors. So this person also you know, mentions the DRV5055 and also this other um, series from Allegro. And, you know, if we just look here, the um, the presence uh, the presence of a south pole um, perpendicular to the magnetic field increases the output voltage towards the supply voltage rail by an amount proportional to the magnetic field. Conversely, the application of a north pole will decrease the out pole out, uh, the the output voltage, but from its quiescent value. And so again, if you aren't using one of these ratiometric Hall effects, then like say you have a North Pole one, then it will increase the the Hall voltage, and a South Pole going past will do nothing. And so you would need two of them: a North Pole one to to signal North Pole magnets, South Pole one to signal south pole magnets just from dumb luck i threw in a ratio metric one so let's go ahead and put that on a breadboard and i'll illustrate this graph to you so if we just put in some simple code right now we're not even doing anything with these pins but they're defined anyways so we get here and we say serial begin um, that and then um, this is again just defining the pins but here's pretty much the whole thing. So we have an integer called sensor value, and that's going to go to the A, A0 pin. And then we're just going to say print the sensor value every quarter of a second and just keep doing that. That's all there is to this, this program. And now we have our Hall effect, and we can see here's the VCC pin. It's going to that line. Here's the Arduino ground pin going there, and here's your Hall effect voltage pin. So those go round, round, round. And we go to here, and there is 5 volts, there is ground, and then here's your A0 pin. And that's all we have right now. So if we just go to the serial monitor, what's it doing? It's putting out that number. Now, I, I misspoke on a previous video. The, the A0 pin takes this 5 volt voltage and divides it into a thousand and twenty four parts so it's putting out a number right around 215 so um, what's that like one volt and if we go back to the the data sheet for this we would see that's the quiescent voltage so now's where it gets fun <laughs> i put a piece of tape on a magnet here so we know this is you know, this is say north and this is south. I'm not sure which is which, but just to to see which ones they are. And now we're going to bring it close to the Hall effect and, and see what happens. Tension so thick you can cut it with a knife. So here's here's this. Now I'm going to bring this in, and it's dropping, and that's that's with the black there. So it's dropped to just about zero volts. Now I bring it out and I'll put it in like halfway. Let's try and get it halfway. And see there, that's the, the ratio metric part. Now I'm going to flip it over. Oh, what's happening? 
Uh, now it's up to like two or three volts. Two volts, I guess. You pull it out. Goes down some, pull it out further. Goes back to the starting voltage. So now you can see that with that single Hall effect, you can say, well, if this value is high, then, you know, do this, turn this switch on to pulse a coil, say, one way. If the switch is low, turn this other switch on to pulse a coil the other way. Now you got your bipolar commutation. So let's just do a little bit of that. Now we, now we have those pins being defined. So we'll say if the sensor value is less than 50, then let's throw pin 13 high. So now we've gotten rid of the sealed print stuff, and we're saying if the sensor value is less than 50, then turn pin 13 high, and then you have to tell it to turn off. So you say, else, if the sensor value is greater than 100 and the magnet's moved away, then turn pin 13 low. And if I bring it past with that end, nothing, because the value's going up. But if I bring it past with this end, Well, it's it's doing just like what the code says. And here with this grayed out part is where you could override the default behavior of just always leaving it on. And you could say, well, if this goes high, because that's, I mean, if this goes less than 50, turn this high and just have it on for 3,000 microseconds and then turn it off. And so that gives you even better pulse width modulation. Um, so now let's do the other side. So now we've thrown in if the sensor value is greater than 350. Throw pin 12 high, and if it gets below 300, then shut it off. And so we've put in that one to pin 12. So let's first see what happens with this forward. Okay, it's always turning that one on. Now I'll flip it over. And it's always turning the other one on. So that's how you do your bipolar commutation with the single ratio metric Hall effect. And of course, you're, you're not going to run the machine off the Arduino, so pin 12 and pin 13 would go. I mean, you could send them to a BJT or to a MOSFET. I like to send them to opto-isolated solid-state relays just to have the opto-isolation in there. And then use these two signals to power the coil one way or the other for bipolar commutation. So that's what I'm going to do with the next, um, the next video. I was thinking maybe I'd throw in some, like, position sensing where you know you could make the green light come on first and then the blue one depending on how close the magnet was coming in but this is getting kind of long this this is enough um, so that's again how you can do the bipolar commutation with a, a ratio metric call and the other thing that I'll do in the next video is um, you know just set the pulse width to a specific duration and that kind of improves your radiant out um, as you get things going faster. Um, and I'll also take the radiant off. I think the first thing I'm going to do is just throw it into some alkaline batteries. And technically, you can't recharge those. However, I kind of think if you're doing pulse charging, you might be able to recharge alkaline batteries. I've decided I don't like lithium ion because, um, for one, they can catch fire. So it's like I wouldn't be real comfortable just leaving it being charged, um, especially because I've salvaged some of the lithium ion batteries. And also, they, they got some nasty like fluoride stuff in there. So it's like if they uh, caught fire, or just leaked, it's like leaking fluoride gas. I, I don't want that. Um, so then you could go with nickel metal hydrides, but they're expensive. And that's where you'd probably get a good clean, you know, test of uh, what's happening with the radiant. But, I mean, it'd be fun just to see, can you recharge some alkalines? And then you, you also have something useful. Save yourself a little money. You don't have to buy uh, more expensive rechargeables. You can just recharge the alkalines. So I don't know if it'll work 50-50, but stay tuned. Okay, take care, everyone. Bye-bye.